Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson. We're continuing our study of the Gospel of Mark. We're in Mark chapter 10. We're going to read verses 13 through 16. We said yesterday that there are three events in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that are tied together. The discussion about divorce, the blessing of the children, and the story of the rich young ruler. Um, Luke does not contain the question about divorce, but he has the other two connected, and then in Matthew and Mark, all three are connected together. And it says in verse 13, they began bringing children to him so that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. This is really angering to me. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. Well, Jesus was too. And he said to them, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. Did not Jesus just say to them, Whoever receives one child like this in my name is receiving me. Did not Jesus just say to them, whoever causes one of these little ones to believe to stumble, it would be better for him if the millstone were... Yes, yes. Jesus has just had a kid on his lap and, and, and hugged that child up and said, whenever you are kind to this child, you are kind to me. And when women are bringing their children to Jesus, the apostles shoo them away and it upsets Jesus. He is so indignant about this, and I understand this so completely. <clears throat> um, because I, you know, I'm a kid person. Um, I love teaching preschool chapel, which I'll be doing in just a few minutes. Um, I love the, the, the younger weeks at, 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 at camp. I love vacation Bible school for so many reasons. And, and, um, and he just... Everything has been such a mess ever since he came down from the Mount of Transfiguration. He's been upset. He's been stressed. And he just got to be in Pharisee debate club over divorce. And now he gets to bless children and spend time with the kids, with the littles. And the disciples are shooing them away. I would want to strangle them if it had been me. Seriously, you think I want to do more of this when I can be here with these kids and participate in formation of their spiritual selves, not reformation and reclamation of people who seem to be intent upon continuing their obtuseness. Um, I, um, I just, um, and, and Jesus is indignant and he said, do not hinder these children. And then he says, if you don't receive the kingdom like a child, you won't enter in at all. And, and Jesus took them into his arms and blessed them and began blessing them. This is something he was continuing to do, but, and laying his hands upon them. So it's very tactile. Um, he's hugging them up, and then he's also laying hands on them to bless them. Um, that's such a wonderful uh, event, and I just, I just love these verses, these four verses here. I love them so much. What does it mean to receive the gospel like a child? There's been so much silliness surrounding this, you know, people say. Well, um, kids are, are so honest. But the kids aren't honest. I mean, they're not. I mean, you can ask a, a 12, 14-month-old child who only knows mom, dad, Jess, and no. You know, if they need a diaper change, and they know what you're asking, and they will tell you no when everyone in the room knows they do. And people say, children are so kind and innocent. Seriously, um, did you ever spend time um, with a group of uh, kids on the playground? <laughs> you know, when there is a dispute, you know, or someone's feelings have been hurt? Seriously, children are helpless, and they know they're helpless, and they are dependent, and they know they are dependent. But I think it's more than that. I really do think it's more than that. I want to teach preschool chapel in about half an hour. And I'm going to talk to the children about the theological proof that God exists. The argument from design that there is a God. And they will absolutely get it. They'll understand it. I don't have any problems teaching them about the essential things of faith. 
no problem whatsoever that there is a God, that he is good, that he speaks, that he expects us to listen to him, that he wants us to be kind to each other, that he wants us to not be selfish, that he wants us to tell the truth, that Jesus had to die for us because we make mistakes and we fail and we do that on purpose sometimes. And when you do it on purpose, that's sin. And, 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 and Jesus, you know, has to sacrifice himself for our sins. They understand all of that. Everything that's essential for salvation, they get. They don't complicate things uh, with, with the complications of their adult life. They don't try to make the gospel hard because their life has, is complicated. Gospel isn't hard. And God's will is clearly and simply communicated. <clears throat> and when your mind is engaged and your hormones aren't yet, that's when, that's when the truth can truly become imprinted on your heart and can last you for the rest of your life. And I think that's what Jesus is talking about. Not letting, you know, your baggage and your hormones and your, and your you know, all, all your adult complexities get in the way of understanding what is simple enough for a four-year-old to understand in preschool chapel. Just, just understand it in its simplicity and live it in all the expansive claims that it makes on your life. I think that's what Jesus is saying. Well, thank you for joining me for another five good minutes. We'll see each other next time and we'll pick up with the rich young ruler.